So hi everybody. Uh, we thanks to participate to this uh, workshop dedicated to uh, the motorization of the UVX uh, spectrograph, and we have also some news about uh, the the drift in temperature uh, about the UVX and uh, how we can uh, improve uh, this uh, this drift. So we have uh, two parts uh, this evening. First, uh, François will take a long part to describe how uh, the motorization work uh, with the UVEX and uh, how uh, you can do the upgrade for the temperature uh, shift. And then I will show you some sample about how to use um, the motorization UVEX and uh, some measurements about the drift in temperature. So Francois, uh, you, you have uh, you have the you, you have the talk to 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 talk. Yes, okay. Thank you, thank, thank you Olivier. Uh, so hello to everybody. It's a real pleasure to have this kind of meeting, and uh, it's always a pleasure to to know that we we have people from uh, all around the world. And um, uh, well, for me, it's really a a, a pleasure to talk about the, this product because. Uh, in fact, we did uh, spend a lot of time on it, and it was it was too long uh, to develop uh, this uh, the, this motorization module. But uh, but now it's there, and it's real uh, pleasure to share it with you. Uh, I, I just want to say I, I think that I, I know most of people uh, were online, but for the few people that uh, I don't know or we we don't know each other personally, uh, be warmly welcome. And uh, for me, it's always very important to uh, uh, to welcome newcomers and, and new people in in the in this community. And uh, it's it's again it's a pleasure to to be able to use this tool to uh, increase and and make uh, the 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 community grow. Um, well, I, I will now. I, I will switch to my presentation. I will share my screen. Um, Olivier, can you confirm this is okay? Uh, no problem. Okay, thank you. Um, and and then, uh, um, so we will talk about the, um, the, the UVEX. Uh, not only the, the, the UVEX motors module, but uh, the, the UVEX with the motors. And, um, and uh, well, very quickly, uh, we'll spend some time on the UVEX itself uh, with the new features of the uh, motors. Uh, we'll talk about uh, a little bit about Demetra uh, for UVEX, uh, because we have, we have um, had some, some important features uh, within Demetra to control the UVEX. We will talk, uh, of course, we'll talk about how to control the uh, the, the, the UVEX with the motors. And there, there is not only the metro. And, and, and uh, beside the metro, uh, we also have, uh, well, different ways to, to control it. And uh, I especially want to talk about the USES protocol. Uh, and the USES protocol is the, the protocol that we have defined, uh, the, the low level protocol, the soil communication protocol uh, that we use to control the instrument. And we, we really want to push uh, this protocol to become a standard for any uh, spectroscope uh, in the world. Uh, let, let's be ambitious. And, uh, and, and it's important also to, to give something uh, uh, universal and, and open uh, to, to share this. And as Olivier said, we'll, we'll discuss also about uh, quickly about the uh, temperature thermal sensitivity uh, that, that we face with the, the first uh, runs uh, of the first units of the uh, UVEX. Okay, uh, so this is the uh, this is the basic uh, uh, that, that you know uh, now, and uh, I do have one uh, on my desk. I've seen Olivier that you also have yours <laughs> on your desk, so I, I hope that I will be able to do some uh, uh, quick uh, demonstration. But most of the, the, my presentation will be um, uh, through the, the slides uh, to to be sure we'll not lose too much time. And um, and uh, well, this is the the, the basic uh, UVEX, the, the manual uh, UVEX, and uh, this is a uh, CAD view of the UVEX with the motor motorization module. So you have the UVEX here, and the motor motors module is uh, the the parts that comes uh, above. And you can see that we have a few buttons, few LEDs, and um, and three connectors for the power supply for 
going to the calibration module and for the USB. Okay. Um, well, when it is uh, installed on an instrument, here is the result. So uh, this is uh, on my personal setup. Uh, so you can see uh, the, 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 the UVEX itself, the UVEX uh, motors uh, module. And, and uh, the, uh, we have the science camera here. We have the guiding module, the LP guiding module with the guiding camera here. You have the calibration module. You have a filter wheel in front of the, uh, the, uh, the, the wool system to be able to, uh, to put some other filters. And uh, I do have the focuser here. And, oops, and I do have the focuser here. And, and uh, so my telescope is a rich equation at inch. So it is a, a quite small telescope, but it is a purely mirror telescope. So it's uh, perfectly adapted to the, uh, uh, to the UVEX. OK, and uh, on, on, so this is the, the, wool, uh, the wool assembly uh, on the left. And uh, here on the on the right, uh, this is another setup, and you can see uh, Roman and uh, Jeremy, who are part of uh, Sheliak's team uh, uh, today. And uh, so Roman is uh, should be online, I think. And and, um, and and Jeremy is in charge of sales at, at Sheliak, so you maybe you are in contact with him uh, when you contact uh, uh, Sheliak. And it was at OHP during last summer. And uh, so during our uh, uh, annual meeting, uh, St Spectro Star Party, uh, which was great, and we've been able to do it again uh, this year. Um, well, the, the, um, I want to come back on, on the features, on the main features of the UVX itself. Uh, and and I, I will go to the uh, uh, motors uh, later on, but this is really to uh, repeat to, to say again that the UVEX um, has few uh, uh, features that, that gives it identity. And the first is that it is an achromatic instrument, so we can go very far in the UV and very far in the infrared. Okay, so achromatic because it is made only on mirrors, and, and then uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the dispersion, the, the optical low are the same at any wavelengths uh, because there are, there are only uh, mirrors. And almost uh, not any uh, glass part in the in the optical chain. Uh, the other point is that we we can change the grating, and then we can um, uh, go from uh, low resolution to quite high resolution, and and then th this gives a, a very uh, a versatile uh, instrument. And uh, also, it, it is uh, really optimized for F8 um, uh, telescopes. Uh, but we can go up to F5, and if we go up to F5 or down to F5, um, we, we don't lose any photons, so we have no vignetting, but we'll, we'll, the, the quality will be a little bit, a little bit lower, so the, the resolution will be uh, a little bit decreased, but it will work. So it means that we can use it on, on very uh, different kind of um, instruments. Okay, and now uh, we have this uh, remote control feature, which was in the plan from the beginning of the UVX adventure, uh, uh, more than one year ago. And, and uh, so it took some time to make it, but now we have it. And the, the really for me, it's important because the, 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 the ability to remote control the instrument is a, is a deep um, uh, tendency, is a deep uh, uh, direction uh, where we are all going to. And, um, and having this feature, uh, being able to control this instrument makes something uh, very, very new and very, very performant and very promising. Okay. And, and uh, well, uh, as a conclusion, for me, the UX is something which is a, really a multi purpose spectroscope. So we, we can do a lot of different things. And so, of course, as, as something that can do a lot of things, maybe not everything is optimal but you have a tool that is able to do a lot a lot of different things okay so this is for me really the identity of, of the instrument uh, so this is a, a, a reminder of what are the different uh, um, um, resolution power uh, uh, with the different grating so we have five gratings uh, the 600 line per millimeter grating is the standard one, and we have uh, one of uh, 150 lines, 300 lines, um, 1200 lines, and 1800 lines. And you have here the resolution uh, around H alpha, which is usually what we, we take as a reference. So we can go in resolution 
and well, these are uh, theoretical value, but we, we know that we are close to the re reality. Uh, we can go from uh, 400 to um, close to 7,000 uh, uh, for the resolution power, the, the uh, lambda divided by d lambda, delta lambda. Okay. Uh, now, um, so th these are some examples. There are uh, already uh, old examples because we have, have already presented this, uh, these observations um, uh, in the past. But the, the idea is uh, really that we can go, um, we can go to the uh, to the deep blue. Uh, here we have HLK NK lines, and this is very important to go so far because in this region there is a lot of astrophysics to do. Uh, so th this is something very, very interesting to go there. And we can see here the Balmer, what we call the Balmer jump, uh, which is uh, close to uh, well, below uh, 3,700 3, um, uh, angstroms. And, and this is, we can see perfectly uh, with, this, uh, with this instrument. And you can see also the, the same uh, for um, another, uh, another star here. And, and on the other side, in the red part, so I've taken here, I, I think I didn't check, in fact, but I think this is an LP, uh, LP600 uh, spectrum as a reference. And so if we align it to what we can do uh, with the, the 300 uh, groups per millimeter grating with the UVEX, you can see how far we can extend uh, the, um, the, the uh, wavelength domain uh, to the red part of the spectrum. So it means that we open the door to, to all this uh, new uh, uh, area, new domain uh, for us. So really, uh, I, I like this image because it shows that it, we will change it. So now I have to be uh, very careful because uh, we can do that. So this is really a single image with a very big sensor with an ASI uh, 294 which has, I think it is a 20 millimeter long uh, CMOS sensor. Uh, but in this case, uh, we didn't use any uh, order filter. And, uh, and then there is some um, uh, duplications of the order, the, the lines uh, in the blue part here uh, to, the, 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 to the second order. So I don't know exactly where is the second order of the HNK lines that we can see here but they are somewhere. So if you really want to use the, the, this full capability, be careful, maybe you have to use better use an order filter to be sure that here in the red part, in the infrared part, you don't have an overlap of uh, the infrared at the first order and the blue at the second order. Anyway, this picture is impressive. And, and, and you can see that this is uh, sharp in uh, all uh, the, the domain. Okay, and uh, also, well, this is a, in a uh, journey Turner uh, architecture. So we have two mirrors here. We have the grating here and, whoops, sorry. And the, the so we have the slits. We enter uh, to the first mirror. Here we have the parallel beam after the, the first mirror, we, which makes a collimator. Uh, here we have the grating and we can change the, the angle of the grating. And, and then the light is sent uh, to the second mirror, uh, which is also uh, both our uh, M1 and M2 uh, spherical mirrors. Uh, and then it sends uh, the, the, the beam uh, to the camera and we go through a, a cylindrical lens uh, because the, 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 the usage of mirrors off axis uh, like we do here makes that we have a lot of astigmatism and then the, the cylindrical lens uh, makes that we can correct uh, a, a big part of this uh, astigmatism. Okay, so this is to, to make sure that the, the, the spectrum at the end is contained uh, only in a few pixels uh, um, high. Uh, and so this is the, the, the new uh, box uh, that we can add on the system. So this is important to say that this uh, motors module can be added to an existing or to a basic uh, UX, okay? And, and you can even um, add this module without opening uh, the, the UX itself, okay? So this is important for us. Uh, you never have to open the instrument. Uh, uh, we know that there is a lot of, the, of people who are afraid to open the instrument and we can understand. And in this case, you can add this module without uh, opening uh, the, um, the instrument. 
Uh, now, uh, regarding the, the, the remote function, um, uh, we have three functions mainly. The first is that we can uh, focus uh, the, the spectroscope itself to have sharp lines. Uh, the second point is that we can control the grating angle, and, and with the grating angle, we control the central wavelengths that we can observe. And uh, the third element that we control is the light source. Um, in fact, uh, so th this was a, a, a suggestion uh, from uh, somebody who may be online. Uh, it, it was Peter uh, Villez uh, who, who, who told us, hey, you have a microcontroller. You have everything, everything in, inside the system. You could include in the system the Spox feature. So the Spox is a small box. Uh, through uh, which we control, we remotely control the calibration lamp, um, the calibration module for the uh, LP, uh, LP system. And then we, uh, with this feature, we include uh, the, the Spox feature in the ca motor calibration module. Um, the, the, so we have uh, uh, three buttons and four LED for a manual operation. So the normal usage is really to use it remotely. But I know that when you put your install for the first time the, the system on your telescope, you need to test it to make sure that it works and maybe to, to do a first rough um, uh, tuning of the instrument. And then it's important to be able to control it. So we have some, some buttons and some LEDs uh, to, 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 to help uh, to make it work. And also important at this stage, we have kept uh, absolutely all the, the uh, accesses uh, to any feature. And uh, now I can I can show you. Um, well, I will stop. If I can. Okay. So I, I hope that you can see. Hmm, not easy because I have uh, the the connector which is plugged. Uh, anyway, so th this is the this is the instrument. Uh, so we have three buttons here. And so there are, there are basic buttons. This is just to have a, a local and, and manual operation, and we have four LEDs. And the idea is that we can we have a select button here, and we can when I click on it and I select which feature I want to uh, activate, and the, the feature can be the grating angle, the focus, or the calibration module. Okay. And once I have uh, selected one function, for instance, the focus, I can use the two other buttons. To, to make the, the, the motor move. Okay, I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, I, I can hear it in my side that uh, the, the, the motor is moving and then I can control it manually. Okay, and this is the same uh, for the different feature and for the calibration module, for instance, uh, I can also uh, switch here. I, I do switch the, uh, the, the, the lamp and, and the, uh, uh, well, the, I do have the calibration lamp, I, I do have the, uh, uh, the flat lamp and so on. So this is the same as Spox for uh, if you know this uh, this instrument. Okay, so we have a manual usage, and uh, I told you that we kept the, the access to all the the tunings. For instance, you know that to to tune the the camera rotation or to attach the camera, the science camera here, I do have an horizontal camera. Uh, we have some holes. Um, uh, in, in this here, here, and, and below. And the access to this hole is remain. So you can uh, really uh, tune and, and uh, remove the camera, for instance, without uh, removing uh, the motor's module. Also, we have kept the access with the two small holes here. We have kept the access to the, um, the tuning of the small angle of the M1 mirror, which is something to have the best uh, optical uh, tuning uh, which is quite sensitive, and, and from time to time, it's good to, to tune this uh, this mirror, and then we can do it um, uh, from outside. And uh, by the way, we also we have had a, a, a small hole here to access to the reset button of the microcontroller, which is inside the, the system, if we need it, and especially we may need it to uh, to access to the uh, well. No, this is not the reset button. Sorry, this is the boot cell button because this is a Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller and then we can uh, update uh, upgrade uh, the, the firmware uh, by, by this way or by the uh, we can also uh, upgrade the firmware remotely so if you are not at home and, and you know, if your observatory is far away uh, you you can do it remotely also okay 
And so the, this is the, the, the a quick presentation of the instrument. So the, 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 the wool instrument is, is quite light. Uh, well, it depends now. Uh, uh, well, compared to an LP600, it is um, uh, quite uh, heavy. But uh, compared to the LRS3, for instance, or LISA, it is something uh, very comparable. I come back to my presentation. Or again, if you have if you have questions, uh, don't hesitate. Uh, maybe uh, I may uh, forget some uh, important points. Now, the, I do have the question: um, uh, How do I uh, control uh, the UVEX? Um, uh, I mean, from from my computer. So, which kind of tool and which kind of possibility I do have? Uh, for us, for us, the, the most important is that we, we know that all of you have uh, different uh, setup, different environments, uh, different uh, uh, computers. Uh, some are under Windows, some are under Linux, and 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 some people prefer to have a very integrated software, where some other prefer to have different software for, for different functions and so on. So and, and really, it's very difficult to answer to all uh, the the needs. And um, I think that we have made something which is which makes uh, really possible to open to any any case uh, that you may face. So the the the, the basic way uh, is uh, to use what we have called the, the uh, uses controller. So the uses is the internal protocol of the system, and then we have made a small application. So it, it has been uh, designed, developed by uh, Nicolas Durand, um, who is the, the who developed also the um, the Demetra software, and um, the the so this is a basic basic uh, software that can run on uh, under Windows, and uh, through this uh, the, the the software, a small piece of software, you can control any uh, any feature of, of the UX. The next way to to um, well maybe I can I can have a quick demonstration. I will try it uh, if I can do the, the, the demonstration. The the next one uh, well the, the 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 rich way is uh, probably uh, to use Demetra uh, because we have we have uh, uh, deeply uh, included or integrated uh, the UVEX features into Demetra, and, and then this is a way to to easily uh, use it. But now um, we know, we perfectly know that not everybody is using uh, uh, Demetra and, and, and some people have their own or their system and, and we really don't want to, to close the door. And then, uh, well, I will have a word uh, later on uh, on the, uh, um, the ASCOM and Indy drivers uh, because this, these are not available yet, but we are working on them. And um, but what uh, well in, in my mind I hope that uh, in, in, we'll have soon the Indy and Ascom drivers to to allow you to to use the the UVEX in any uh, software that can uh, manage uh, Indy or Ascom. Uh, but at the end we have this low level protocol, and the UVEX and 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 we have made something very open, very documented. So we have a GitHub. Uh, a repository with all the documentation about uh, this um, this uh, protocol, and and well again uh, we know that we uh, uh, among the others the observers uh, we have people that are familiar with the computer and we have people who are not. We have guys who want to have something that works immediately without any effort and, and some other who want to uh, deeply uh, integrate uh, the system in their observatory. And I think that with this approach, and we can really we, we can really answer all the all the needs and all the, the, the configuration, possible configurations. Uh, well, this is a quick a, a quick uh, view of the UA, UZIS controller, so the, the basic software uh, to, to control the uh, the, the UVEX. And in fact, uh, so you, you have a certain number of properties, and these properties are defined uh, in the UVEX. And through the uh, UZIS controller, you can read the, the, the value of the, these different properties. For instance, we know that the grating fee is at uh, close to uh, 15 uh, uh, degrees. And and uh, uh, for the features, for the sorry, the properties that are possible to change, like the grating angle, for instance, you can put a value here, click on set, and then it will move uh, the motor to the right angle. 
so, and, and this is a list of, feature, of uh, properties. And what is important here is that the UZ controller, so we have called it UZ's controller and not UX controller, because this is really based on, on, this is a generic piece of software. So we can imagine that we create a new instrument with other properties, uh, the, the one of the UX, and, and it will be very easy to manage uh, these other properties uh, through the software without uh, changing uh, any line uh, in the code of, of this uh, uses controller. Okay, so the, the basic usage is really to have something easy to use and to make a, a, a quick and easy uh, solution to make uh, control the instrument. Um, and, and, but behind we have something which is uh, very uh, powerful. The or oh, I've noted here, uh, uh, we have two different properties, uh, the grating angle. So the, the most important is that we have the light source, we have the focus position, and we have the grating angle. But we have also the, the another property which is deeply linked uh, to grating angle, which is the wavelength. So uh, um, technically speaking, we can the grating angle. But of course, when you are doing spectroscopy, what is interesting is to know what is the central wavelength of, of, the, um, uh, of the spectroscope in this position. So we can control the angle either by the angle or by the wavelengths. And, and, and of course, if I change the wavelength, it will change automatically the, the, the grating angle. Uh, but uh, just keep in mind that the grating angle is the same for any grating where the wavelengths, the central wavelengths requires uh, to to uh, to know what is exactly the grating density uh, which is in the UX. So we have another uh, property here uh, to give in this case. So we, we know that we have the 600 lines per millimeter grating, and this value is required uh, to be sure that we have a right calculation for the, the wavelength central lines. Uh, now, this is um, uh, the, the, the same view, but this time this is for the, um, uh, for the Demetra software. And the advantage, so the idea is the same. The, the advantage is when we are using uh, Demetra with the UX uh, motors module, you will have in, in, the, in the acquisition window, well, I guess that you are familiar with that, uh, you will have some more information about the uh, UVEX motors, so the, the, the values uh, that uh, can be, cannot be changed from this uh, panel, but if you want to change them, you just have to double click and it will open the same windows, uh, the same window as the UZIS controller. So it's not exactly, the, the, in this case, it is included in, in the Metra, but the, 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 the user interface is exactly the same. So. Uh, we, you, you can access to the different properties. And then you also have the light uh, source, which is one of the features that you can, uh, one of the properties of the UX that you can change. And in this case, uh, we did consider it is important to be able from the, the, the acquisition menu uh, to be able to change it here. So uh, using this, this, uh, this uh, remote feature, I can really just select a flat, uh, I do start, and I will have uh, a flat image. Uh, instead of a star image or a calibration image. And I can tell you that when, when you start using it, uh, you, you, you want to keep it, in fact. <laughs> um, uh, the next, uh, so the, 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 yeah, I, I want to just uh, take this, uh, this slide um, about the, uh, uh, about the metro, or, I'm speaking, I don't know if you are still there. Olivier, you are still there? Yes, of course. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I say, well, if, if the communication is lost for half an hour, it, it would be a pity. Um, the, the, regarding the, the Demetra, so we, we have, you, you know that we have uh, one Demetra version for uh, all uh, our instruments. Uh, well, most of our instruments, uh, not all, and uh, we have a Demetra for UX. And uh, in this case, what we did add uh, for the UX is first we have included the, what we call the CMED uh, processing step uh, to correct uh, for the, the mainly for the the the, the, well, the, the CMOS uh, uh, problems or limits that, uh, that that we have. 
you know that we have some telegraphic noise, uh, which is a non um, non one noise uh, due to CMOS uh, technology, and this is better to correct it by filtering and by using the uh, over sampling because we have small pixels uh, with the CMOS sensors. Uh, and then it's important to, to correct that. So this is something on which um, uh, Christian Buil did work uh, uh, some time ago, and we have included uh, this uh, processing, processing step uh, in, in UX. So now we can really use uh, any CMOS uh, sensor um, uh, without any problem. And, and by the way, this is also valuable for all the other uh, Demetra versions. So for the P, for the shell and so on. So it is included for all the instruments. And, and by the way, it is activated only if you are using a CMOS sensor. So in, in the windows, uh, in the window where you can give the camera parameters, uh, you can tell the system if it is a CCD or CMOS camera. If this is a CMOS, you will add uh, this uh, CMED processing step. We have also added a, a new uh, set line calibration method. So today we had, uh, we had, in fact, the automatic method and the manual method. And it appeared at the beginning of the UVX that, in fact, this instrument is very, very linear. And then we can really, if we change, if we rotate the, the grating, we can really keep uh, the, the, the dispersion low. Uh, for the calibration and just um, readjust it based on a single line. And this is something very useful. And we don't, we don't really need to recalculate uh, the dispersion law uh, at any position because it is very, very stable uh, from, the, from the blue to the red. Well, it's not purely linear. You have some non-linearity, but at first order, it's, it is very uh, useful. And especially it is useful in, in the UX because we can go very far in the red and very far in the blue. And in these regions, we don't have a lot of lines to do the calibration. So in this case, we are very happy to have this way to calibrate. So to establish a, a calibration law based on, on, on the visible range and then extend it uh, to the, the blue or to the red. Uh, the, of course, we have included in, in the, the metro for the UVX, the, the UVX motor control, uh, as uh, I just showed you before. And we have also activated, I mean, uh, it, it did exist, in fact, for a long time in the metro, but we ne did never talk about that so much, which is the sequences. So now I've seen, I've shown you that we, you can do directly uh, flat images, dark images, uh, calibration images, and and then you now you can now really do a sequence of uh, a series of dark, a series of calibration uh, frames, a series of uh, flat frames, and so on, just by one click. So you can record all the sequence uh, that you want uh, to to have, and this is very linked to the fact that we can uh, talk to the calibration module uh, easily. And uh, by the way, of course, so this is something that we should have done for a long, long time, but uh, we, we did it only recently, is that we have added uh, all the, the parameters and, and especially the cal calibration reference lines for all the different gratings. So, uh, so far it worked well uh, with the 600 uh, lines per millimeter grating, but now it, it also works for all the other uh, gratings. So you can really use uh, the UX uh, with any, uh, any grating and you will have, uh, it will be uh, uh, easier uh, to, to, to process the data and, and, and to pass the, uh, uh, the calibration step. Uh, now, I, I want to have a, a short uh, stop on, on this uh, UZIS protocol. Uh, this is something which is, to me, very important. So uh, we, we have developed a tool, um, an instrument, a device, but really, during this development, we, we, we understood that uh, uh, this is probably not the last time that we, are, we have to control a uh, spectroscope. Uh, there is a deep tendency to have more and more remote capabilities. So uh, we will have in the future more and more motors, more and more uh, remote features. And, and then um, we, we, we wanted to develop something that can be reused. Uh, in the future, and, and by the way, which can we use, be reused also by any uh, developer uh, in hardware or in software uh, in the future. So we did want to add something open, and then we propose this uses protocol. Uh, it is open. It is 
be documented. We have a GitHub um, a repository here, and, um, and and you can read it. You can use it. And and the idea really is that I hope that it can become a standard of the uh, uh, astronomical spectroscopy in such a way that if a hardware developer um, create a new instrument, it can be recognized by and it can be controlled by any software uh, that is uh, uses compliant. And the same for the reverse. So if a software developer uh, work on, on the spectral feature uh, the, the, of uh, his software, piece of software of uh, uh, clients for maybe uh, ASCOM in D or anything else. Uh, the the idea is that if it develops uh, this software, it can be compliant. It can it can control any spectroscope uh, that is uh, uses uh, compliant. Uh, the idea is really to have something standard because if we do something standard, we reduce the development effort. We share the the development effort. And, and and we can go uh, faster, we, we go far, and, and well, this is really the idea. So uh, we, we did our best to, to think about uh, what can be done in this area. So we have included some features that are even not yet in the UX, uh, UX device. And of course, if in the future we have to add some features because we, we it is impossible to know today uh, all what, what can be done in the future, but in this case, of course, we will make uh, this specification evolve. Uh, so this is a, a protocol which is based on properties. And, uh, and in fact, we also have prepared some elements to help the developers. For instance, uh, you, you, uh, we, have a, a, we have a UZIS uh, library. Uh, if you want to, to develop a hardware based on Arduino or Raspberry Pi, well, there is a, a typo here, and the the, uh, the so the Raspberry Pi Pico. So it's something I hope that you can see it on the screen. And and so this is the microcontroller which is inside the uh, the UX motors, and um, and uh, the the idea and it works also for Arduino. So we have developed a UZIS library, so it's easy to to develop. And we have also uh, made uh, something that we, you can just uh, uh, drag and drop uh, a file in this Pico, uh, Pico uh, microcontroller, and this becomes uh, immediately a UZIS compliant device. So you can do your own uh, development, uh, software development on your side. And, uh, and by the way, we have also uh, uh, proposed a, a quick demo example of uh, Python code uh, to, 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 to talk uh, to this device through the UZIS protocol. By the way, during, during the development phase, personally at home, uh, I, I did use a uh, small uh, Python uh, code to, to control the, the UVEX uh, modules, to change the, 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 the light source, to change the getting angle and so on. So, so this is something which is uh, very easy to do. And, and we, we shared what we have done to, to help you to save time uh, if you want to do your own system. Okay, and the idea is really, we, we propose something which is uh, well integrated, but if you want to create your own uh, software, if you want to connect your own software to the, the UVEX or to your, the UZIS protocol, this is easy to do, this is documented, and, and this is really, for me, a pleasure uh, to share that uh, with all of you. And of course, the, the future developments uh, from Shediac will be based on this, uh, this uh, system. Now we have developed the, the, the environment, the next time it will be, of course, uh, simpler and faster. Few words about uh, ASCOM and Indie drivers. Um, well, I can finish by the Indie driver because this one is is uh, I would say quite easy to do uh, because uh, Indie. Uh, so Indie, if you don't know it, Indie is like ASCOM uh, platform, uh, but for the Linux environment. So ASCOM is really uh, limited to Windows. Indie is limited to Linux. And uh, the in Indie, so in fact, we, we have based uh, our system to something which is quite close to Indie. Uh, Indie uses properties, uh, uses is, do, is using properties. So it's it's quite easy to do this, uh, the, the, the link uh, between uh, Indie and uses. So we have somebody who is currently working on, on the Indie driver. So we should have it in some weeks or months uh, from now. Uh, regarding the, the ASCOM, this is uh, a little bit more complex, um, or at least to me, maybe because I'm not familiar enough for all the details. 
but um, uh, so we, we have to we still have to work uh, on that, especially to find exactly what we have to do to to help uh, people at short term. But I just want to mention that uh, we very recently, a few days ago, we discussed uh, with uh, Mark Spohl, who is online tonight, uh, today for you, and the and and the, the this guy is an expert in alpaca um, uh, drivers. And if you know, so he, he, uh, Mark, you, you explained me uh, that uh, very well a few days ago. Uh, the alpaca is somewhere the future of ASCOM, and alpaca is really also a protocol. Uh, that, and in fact, it allows ASCOM to work in client-server uh, mode, uh, where the, the purely ASCOM, the, the historical ASCOM, is only limited to the computer where it is installed. Okay, and, and, and of course, the future is also with the client server architecture. Uh, and then the, 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 the Mark is very motivated uh, to create an Alpaca driver based on the UZIS protocol. And maybe probably, uh, as you said, Mark, maybe we, we uh, they are so close. So may, maybe, uh, in fact, this, this UZIS protocol will become the Alpaca or, or, or the reverse. I don't know, but they, they, they are so close. So it, it should be quite easy to, to manage that. Now, I think that um, the, the idea we have behind is that I would like to ask the ASCOM um, uh, developers uh, to create a new uh, category of devices uh, for the spectroscope, because the problem I have today is that if I look at the ASCOM, I see cameras, I see a focuser, I see mounts, I see filter wheels, I see I see domes and so on, but I don't see any spectro. And 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 based on this uses uh, protocol definition that we have made, I think we are really ready to to propose something saying well. Here is uh, here are all the properties and here are all the methods that we have to have for a spectral device. And then we are very motivated with Mark uh, to, to go to the ASCOM uh, group uh, and say, hey, we have a proposal uh, to, to open, to extend uh, this ASCOM environment to the spectroscopy. Uh, but this is still to be done. And, and for what I've understood is that we have something very clever for the long term, but for the short term, maybe we will have to do something uh, uh, more compliant with the existing software uh, and the existing software. Software don't know the, I mean, the client software don't know the uh, uh, what, what is a spectroscope. In fact, so we, we still have to to discuss and to understand exactly what to do. And by the way, if you have a good idea on that, uh, I'm very open to to listen to you. Now I will finish uh, with. Um, uh, the, the, the question of thermal sensitivity. Uh, uh, this is also uh, an important point at the, the beginning. After after the first uh, UVEX uh, in the field um, uh, worked, uh, the, we, we discovered that well, few observers, uh, not all of them, but few observers did uh, realize that we we had quite a high thermal sensitivity uh, of the UVEX. So it means that the the uh, if the temperature of the observatory changes by uh, five, ten degrees, degrees uh, during the night, uh, then you, you, you'll you see the, the spectrum, uh, the UVX spectrum uh, moving um, along the, the uh, dispersion line. So th this is not uh, uh, this, this is not a good point. And so everybody says, well, we, we can manage it because we just have to, to redo uh, quite often calibration frames. And this is a general statement. So. At the end of the day, it was not a big deal, but but anyway, it, it, it is not what we do expect uh, from such an instrument at, uh, at this price and so on. And, and then we, we did work on that. And finally, uh, well, I, I don't go into de de too, too, uh, deep in the details, but uh, we, we did realize uh, that we had some plastic parts and most probably the, 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 the movement, the shift was due to the um, uh, to the, the difference in dilatation uh, with the temperature of, between the plastic part and the aluminum part. So we decided to change this plastic part uh, by aluminum ones, and then uh, after that we have seen uh, that we we can uh, uh, almost eliminate uh, this uh, this, this uh, shift. It is not totally eliminated, but uh, as you know, the perfection doesn't exist and uh, we, we, we still have something uh, 
we can measure it. We can measure this movement. Uh, but uh, really, it is at uh, such a level now that we consider that the problem is solved. Uh, I can I can show you. Well, there, there are these are some internal parts that have to be changed, and it, it is especially uh, regarding this um, attachment of the two mirrors uh, inside the the, the UVX. And uh, so this is this part, and all the the blue parts. The, we have three parts here uh, that has uh, to be replaced. So the, the initial design when it was in plastic here, and we do replace it by aluminum parts. And uh, we have also increased the the the, the pressure of, of the spring uh, to make sure that there is no uh, no movement, no vertical movement of the spectrum. And uh, and also, well, we also made some other changes, not really for the temperature sensitivity, but to to make it easy uh, uh, to work uh, with the with the motors. Especially, we have put we have added a ball bearing here in the red in this slide at the at the back. It didn't exist before, and this is to really to improve uh, have uh, the rotation of the focus button much much smoother. And, and this is the case today. So uh, today, we, the effort to rotate the, the, the button is much lower than before. So these are the, the different um, uh, modifications that we have made. And then uh, at this stage, uh, so there is a, a good and, and a bad news. The good one is that we have understood the code, the, the cause, the root cause for the thermal sensitivity, and 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 we have worked on on, on the integration of the motors. Uh, so we have something which is uh, really much better uh, than uh, at the beginning. The bad news here is that we have to replace some parts of the existing uh, uh, UVX. So what we propose today uh, is simply uh, to do, if you already have a UVX and in, in the list of uh, attempts today, uh, I know that uh, there is a, a quite high number of UVX users. Uh, so if you have a, a, a UVX, we decided to make the modifications at cost um, uh, uh, to, to make it not too much expensive. And we have already uh, bought all the parts to do it, okay? And, uh, and um, the, the we say, in fact, so the, the, my idea is, uh, if you can afford uh, to, do, to, uh, to, to do this upgrade, uh, then we will do it at cost. And if this is too expensive for you, Sheliac will take care, uh, will take it um, on its own uh, to make sure. I really don't want that there are too many, that there, there, there are any, um, I would say, old UVEX in the feed. And I really prefer that we, we may replace uh, the, these parts uh, for the future. So if you can afford uh, for, for the, this extra cost, uh, please do it. And if you don't, tell us and, and, and we do, we'll see what we can do and we'll find a solution. Okay, uh, what is important, it, if you want to access to the UVX Motors module, it is really required to have these changes, especially to, to reduce the, uh, the effort uh, to rotate the, the button for the focus. And uh, and we have al uh, already received all the parts, so we, we can do the upgrade uh, from now. So uh, please contact us uh, if you want uh, to have this uh, upgrade and or uh, the motors. And I have finished. Maybe maybe I can test. Um, I can test. Well, maybe you can ask questions if you want. And I can also test to look uh, to see if I can. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Uh, that I, I want to propose you, Francois, that I, I can show my presentation first, and then yeah. you, you can do the, the, the real time uh, uh, with your, uh, your, your VEX at home. Perfect. Okay. By the way, can you see my screen? Not, okay. not, not, not for this. Yes, now. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I stopped the, the screen sharing. The, go ahead, Olivier. 
and okay. take away. Oh, I, I just want to, to show you that uh, I do the upgrade of, uh, on my UVEX. So here you, you can see the motorization module. And uh, I have also, not me, but the Sheliac team upgrade uh, for me uh, inside the UVEX uh, all the parts in aluminum part for the, the drift in temperature uh, of the UVEX. So uh, this is my new UVEX with motorization, and you can see here, this is a new uh, camera uh, i533 uh, free free, uh, monochrome uh, camera, uh, better than the uh, previous camera uh, ISI183 with no amp glow, for example, so it's very, uh, very good choice for, uh, for the UVEX to take this camera. And uh, I have also put on the first, on the front, um, a filter drawer for the um, order filter to go far in the infrared part of the spectrum. So this is my new UVEX, and I will show you uh, how I can do some tests uh, to, to just to, to show uh, if the drift in temperature is correct or uh, if the motorization work well, uh, for, especially for the web length uh, choice, uh, uh, depending on the grating. So, first of all, um, uh, here is my uh, UVEX uh, fix on my RC 12 inch uh, telescope in my uh, on dome uh, at home. So, uh, you will see here uh, it's a classical uh, Richard Cretien open at F8. And uh, also, all the UVEX parts and motorization uh, that you can see uh, before. Uh, and uh, I use, of, of course, a Focuser uh, Boss 2 uh, to focus the beam uh, into the UVS uh, slit. So, uh, to, in fact, to connect all the parts of uh, UVX on your computer, it's very easy. Uh, of course, you have the auto guiding camera here. It's uh, AIS uh, I174. Uh, uh, the just a small uh, um, camera from uh, the uh, zoo. Uh, and for uh, spectral camera, I use uh, uh, ISI533, uh, um, the, the new one of uh, zoo camera. And uh, to connect uh, the motorization module here, you have three cable. In fact, the first one is a power supply, a 12 volt. So you can use a standard power supply of 12 volt uh, and plug in it in this uh, slot here. And the second is the cable, the cable here, where in fact uh, drive the uh, calibration module here, the LP calibration module here. So this cable is included with the motorization. So you don't have to uh, to add other cable, it's included in the motorization um, module. And it can drive the flat lamp, the argonian lamp, and also the, the both uh, at the same time to, to take a dark, dark frame or offset frame uh, for uh, the spectral camera. So, uh, yeah, the, there are a uh, user's full tip I discovered uh, with this uh, setup. Uh, you have to link, in fact, uh, the motorization module to the, your computer to, in fact, uh, control all the, the parameter from uh, the focus motor, for the grating motor, for the calibration lamp. In fact, you have just to plug a small USB cable from the motorization module to your uh, camera, your Zoo camera, uh, with, in fact, the cable, uh, the cable was sold with uh, the high camera, in fact, the a small cable of 20 inch long. And the advantage of this, if you have a not, uh, you have one less cable to connect to the PC. And uh, it's very useful because uh, 
uh, you have only you only need a very short cable USB cable. So I had just uh, first I test the. Um, uh, using the motor rating with the US uh, uses controller. So I only test the uses controller uh, software. So it's very easy, in fact, to, to use it. Huh? You, you launch, uh, you run the, the software and you have just to, to choose the device and you have the device is UX by default. And after you click to connection on your connection, you just to have to select the right uh, COM port uh, of your computer and then you have all parameters who are here uh, on you it's very easy to use it for example if you uh, you have uh, first when you use uh, the uvex with uh, given greater uh, greeting for the first time you have to uh, calibrate the zero order of uh, the, this greeting. For example, I would like to use my UVEX with a 600 rate greeting. So I put the 600 greeting into my UVEX and then I find the zero order. Zero order, in fact, it's very uh, easy to find because it's only uh, a white uh, 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 a white rectangle, vertical rectangle, very bright. Uh, with in fact no dispersion of the light so it's very easy to to find it and when you find uh, this position you just put uh, the 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 zero order close to the center of your uh, spectral camera and then you go here and you uh, uh, enter zero in this box and then press calibrate so uh, sorry here the interface is in French, but uh, here is calibrate. So uh, you have to also push uh, zero and then calibrate, and that's enough. Your uh, UVEX uh, motorization grating it's uh, calibrate for this grating. So after, if you want to go uh, in another wavelength, alors just check if you have the right. Uh, Resolution of regretting here, here it's 600. And then you have just to put the wavelength in nanometer here, in this case. For example, if you go on to go to H alpha line, you put uh, six, uh, five, uh, in five, six, five, six in fact, but I, I put here six, five, two, and then press valley, uh, set. And in French, it's validate, validate but uh, in English, the interface is set. And then, when you push the set button, the motor rotate and go directly to the H alpha line. So here uh, you have the daylight, uh, the sun daylight here, the spectrum of the sun. And you will see here H alpha close to the middle of the uh, camera frame. Uh, the blue uh, here, the blue vertical uh, line uh, show the middle of the, uh, uh, of the sensor. So you will see that it's very close to the sensor, to the middle of the sensor. And uh, it's very useful because in just one click, you have the right wavelength you want. So it's very easy to go uh, from uh, one another wavelength to another one. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't show you um, Stella Spectra because in France now the weather is very bad. But I have only checked uh, my UVEX motorization only with the daylight. So uh, sorry for that, but I have not, I have no uh, Stella Spectra to show. So at the same, uh, for another wavelength, I, I, I stay with this same uh, grating. And uh, for example, I would like to, to go to H and K line. Uh, H and K line, it's under uh, 400 nanometers. So I put in this case uh, uh, 393, for example. I push the set button and go, you, the motor go directly to the correct wavelength. So you will see as a, a little bit a shift from the nominal position at the center on the H and K line, it's really close to the center, but not really to the center. Uh, but you can see here, uh, with no difficulty, you have the H and K line directly on the screen. And uh, another example, if you want to go, in fact, now in the near infrared part of the spectrum, 
So here I put uh, um, 850 nanometers on, uh, okay, I, I press set and uh, the gradient turn to, uh, you will see here, the calcium line of the sun here, the free calcium line of the sun. So it's very precise because I, I ask to the motor to go to Y to five, uh, sorry, eight, five, zero. And so the, the line, it's close. The, this calcium line, it's near uh, five, uh, eight, five, zero. So it's very close to the, the, um, the given value. So it, here is an example with only just one grating. You can easily go from uh, one line to another very quickly uh, just to press a value on a button and uh, it's very easy to go from another, uh, another wavelength uh, this way. So now I will just present you shortly uh, the, the drift jump measurement I did uh, with my UVEX. Uh, alors, I, 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 I do, uh, I did uh, measurement before Ubret and I did measurement after Ubret just to show you the improvement of this Ubret. For that, I put um, um, a temperature sensor, a PT100 uh, uh, sensor uh, on, uh, on the UVX body like this. And uh, I do measurements uh, in my dome. Uh, just with the air dryer uh, to uh, grow up the temperature inside the dome from, uh, let's say, 20 degrees Celsius to up uh, 35 degrees Celsius. So in this uh, case on the left, you will see the drift before regret and uh, from 22 degrees Celsius to 33 degrees Celsius. And uh, in fact, you have a shift about more than 13 micrometer per degree Celsius. So it's very important, in fact. And after the hybrid with the uh, aluminum part uh, about the, the mirror M2 and M1 support, you have now only three micrometer uh, shift degree per, uh, per degree Celsius. So in fact, you increase by a factor of more than four, the precision, the accuracy of the UVEX with this uh, hybrid. So here is, um, in fact, the, the value, the real value I measure. Uh, in fact, I measure the shift of the wavelength uh, close to uh, uh, 4,077 angstrom. And I, I just uh, measure the shift uh, during time uh, shift temperature, and I measure the uh, drift of this uh, line. So, in fact, uh, before the upgrade, it's more than 13 uh, micrometers per degree, and after upgrade, it's only 3 micrometers per degree Celsius. So, it's a very uh, a great improvement uh, in the UVEX uh, with this upgrade. And here is the curve uh, with the value, the real value I observe before and after the upgrade. Well, that's all I can show you this night because when I say uh, I can't uh, do stellar spectroscopy uh, with by weather in France uh, now, but I, I hope to do uh, some uh, spectra uh, soon. So uh, now if you have uh, some question, uh, Francois and I, we will be uh, there to, to, to answer. Olivier, this is Sean. I do have a couple of questions. Uh, that new 533 camera, does that work out of the box in terms of back focus? Yes, it's the same back focus. Uh, exactly the same back focus of the 183 uh, uh, ICE, uh, one, the previous uh, camera I use. I just, in fact, if you look here, I just uh, unscrew my old camera, unscrew the new camera in place on all uh, the rest of the, uh, all of the rest of the tuning. It's, it's correct. So you have no need to do anything else to use a new, this new camera on your UVEX. Great. 
Uh, that that sounds really good. And you said there's no uh, electronic glow like yes. in the 183. An, yeah. an, another another good uh, another good point with this camera is um, the analogic to digital uh, conversion. It's not 12 bytes, but 14 bytes. So you have more dynamic with this camera than the other one. Great. Um, my second question is. After you calibrate a particular grading, say the 600 line grading, if you take it out, put another grading in, when you come back, do you have to recalibrate or does uh, the driver, the software remember? Uh, no, uh, at this time, no, the software don't, re don't remember the previous, uh, uh, the previous value of per, uh, given uh, grading. So you have, uh, you have to recalibrate your grading again, but, but, what I, uh, uh, for my, uh, just uh, my, my own test, I have uh, uh, do the test with uh, 600 rating, the 1,200 rating, and the 1,080 rating on three of all three. If, in fact, I just calibrate for, uh, for the first time with the 600 rating. And in fact, it worked uh, with the other rating without to calibrate individually uh, each other rating. I don't know if I am lucky because all the Z order are close together or not, but in fact, it works uh, without uh, to do uh, new calibration for every grating. Okay. I can, I can add a word here. Uh, the, the, what I've seen on my side is well, so I think that Olivier, yes, you are a little bit lucky, but my 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 um, the, the, my experience shows that uh, if you change the grating, the zeros order is is not really not far, and it is for sure in the image, so it's really uh, easy to 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 see where it is. But now, what what is important it, uh, for the wavelengths uh, for the grating angle, this is very easy to recalibrate because you just go to zero. When you are to zero, you are almost sure that uh, it is in the image. The, the zero order is in the image, and then you can uh, easily move it and recalibrate. So this this is something which is very easy to do. This is not the same for the focus. The, the focus, you know, for the focus, it's it's quite difficult to to evaluate if the focus is, is good or not. So in this case, it is more sensitive. But uh, of course, there is no effect of the changing the grating and so on. So uh, the, the, the 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 calibration of, of the focus is not that easy. But the calibration of the grating angle is 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 done very quickly. And then finally, a question for you, Francois. What if one of the original units that would require the upgrade as well as the motorization unit, roughly what kind of turnaround time are we looking at? The the uh, we 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 well we uh, again we have uh, all the parts and uh, I, I think we can say that we 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 will t keep uh, you instruments uh, maybe no more than two weeks. Okay. We, we, we don't know exactly. In fact, the best for us would be that we collect all the UVX together and we make it in, in one shot. But I, I know it's not feasible because you, you have all your own constraints. Uh, but so if we can group them together, it's better. But if not, uh, we will take a little bit more time. But uh, it is something like, yes, uh, what I, I would say two weeks. Two weeks looks reasonable. Okay, thank you. But uh, uh, Sean, to answer your question about uh, the, uh, the, um, to conserve in memory the grating, uh, the zero order grating position for each grating, I think it's possible to imagine in a future uh, improvement of the software to have, for example, a case uh, or a short menu, local menu. Uh, with a 600 grating and you are just to to click on 600 grating and you have all the parameters uh, in memory uh, we can back to the software uh, at the right place depending on the grating you use so i think well, i'm not the developer of the software but i we can imagine that we can do uh, this automatically in fact it, yeah it seems like it would be possible there, there is something uh I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure of what I'm saying now, but um, I am almost sure. And this is surprising to me. I've discovered that um, if, if I want to have a good precision for um, 
shooting for a given wavelength, uh, I have to adjust the actual um, uh, number for the uh, grating density. And uh, if I keep, for instance, I made some tests with the um, uh, 12, uh, 1200 uh, lines per millimeter grating. And uh, if, if I go, uh, if I select a wavelength, it goes a little bit too far. And, and, uh, and the more uh, in the red I go, uh, the, 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 the more the gap is important. And then I, I've realized that if, in fact, if I put not uh, 1,200 in, in the grating density, but 1,210, I do have better precision. So I suspect uh, that this is a question of uh, uh, precision tolerance in, in the grating density itself. So I, I've never seen that before because we have never made, made this kind of uh, calculation. And I'm almost sure of that because if I ask for uh, 360 degrees, so make a full uh, turn, uh, I go back, I, I arrive again uh, to the zeros order. So I, I know this is not a problem with the, the mechanics or things like that. This, this is, uh, well, again, I do, I do have to ask uh, to uh, our uh, vendor, uh, grating vendor, if they know the, the, what is the, uh, the precision or to, the tolerance of the grating density. That's fun. Any other question? I don't know if you have seen in the chat, but uh, it looks like <laughs> we have found the solution with Mark. Thank you, Mark, uh, for the uh, for the ASCOM driver, uh, even for the for the short term. Uh, using uh, the, the, the what say, said Mark is that we, we can do we can make an an alpaca uh, driver that is compliant with the current uh, ASCOM platform. The only condition, if I have well understood, is that we have to use the uh, uh, version six point five uh, of the ASCOM platform. But this it's, is the standard one, and 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 I think it's it's six it's six point five or newer. Uh, six point five was the first version had the full alpaca integration. So anything 6.5 or later. Um, and I got a question. I sent you, I know you've been real busy. I sent you email. One of the libraries that I need to download is password protected. Oh, uh, uh, the, Git, the GitLab one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, this is, uh, well, this is a mistake. The, the, uh, we have, I, I will, well, I don't remember exactly. I've seen your message, but uh, I, will, I will reply to it tomorrow morning. No. The 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 well the, this is a mistake in the link so the the, the link that you have shown is is private uh, so but the, but this is not the the, the normal link but I have to I okay. have to give it to you because I'm I'm ready to I'm ready to start building the simulator uh, so I can get the rest of the stuff working because I'm I'm that far along already I've already got the the alpaca <laughs> framework I've got I've got the alpaca framework done. Yeah, je, you are going too fast for me. Well, anyway, really, thank you, thank you, thank you, and and I, I love to work like that, and and uh, the, uh, well, uh, it, 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 it it's good. The and uh, Stefan, you asked some question about the the ASCOM, and and and, and maybe Stefan, we will have a, a discussion. You you want me to to make sure that. If we do that, uh, it will it will fulfill your own need, and uh, and it, it is a, a satisfying solution. But I, I guess yes. But, uh, what, what I'm going to do is one 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 driver. I'm going to do a driver that's what we talked about the other day. But I'm also going to do a driver after, after today's discussion that shows up as as you as so I guess Stefan mentioned using uh, two to shows up as two focusers and a filter wheel. Then you'll be able to use it with an existing ASCOM system to control things. Okay. We're still doing other other stuff that we got, and it, it will not be. It'll be very little extra effort on my part to do the the two different flavors of it. Oh, so, okay. um, you know, the the one flavor that we talked about the other day, we got to get we got to get ASCOMs buy-in. But this other version, we don't have to get them to do to agree to anything because we're going to do it to the existing standards. Okay, okay, uh, okay, understood. Perfect, wonderful. I've got Good. a question. Yes. After modification, mounting motors has to be done by myself? 
Uh, so that, that, that's a good question also. Um, uh, since we we uh, we have to upgrade all the instruments, uh, what we propose is that if we do the upgrade, we will do uh, ourselves uh, the, the the assembling of the motors module. Or if, if you want to do it, you, we we can let the, the system uh, like that, and and you will do it yourself. But uh, uh well now we we know how to do it and it is fast for us and it will be longer for you so we we can do it uh when you you send it back and and um and and by the way uh <laughs> well this is a good question that we have today we have the ubex and we have the motors module and uh, we will of course we will prepare uh uh but this is not available yet but we will have a a, a motorized ubex uh, version uh, that, uh, that that is the compilation of what's already assembled. But uh, again, so far, most of people have a UX and, uh, and, and we have to agree, agree it. Right. Well, okay. Yep. This is Stan Watson in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, what is the price for a completely new modern uh, UVEX system? What are you charging? <laughs> At the the well, this is I, I even don't know. Uh, I, 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 um, oh, sorry, I, I should have I should have prepared this uh, this uh, question. Um, the the let, let me check. So, uh, uh, well, this is just we, we just have to add the price of the UX itself and, and the price of the UX uh, motors module. Uh, just give me one second. You don't have to do it now. You can email it out. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. sure. I'd like to know too. I know, I know, I know that you are standing. You are, you are waiting for. You were waiting for a long time for for the euros, and, and uh, uh, I, okay, uh, we'll we, we'll uh, we'll update you. Oh, okay. Perfect. Well, by by the way, the 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 UVEX, um, the right. UVEX motors module is. I do have. Uh, I am on the Schlepp website. Uh, is uh, one thousand and one hundred forty five uh, euros without taxes. Okay, and the uh... well, I can go to the website if you put it in. You know, oh no, well, no, this is, uh, this is this is your screen. Uh, this is your screen only. Okay. Anyway, we will write to you and uh, we'll contact you. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, are you interested by a, a short demo, a live demo, or are we tired? Yeah, I'd like to see it. <laughs> This is well. Uh, well the, the, I'm taking some risks because you know the demo effect. <laughs> uh, let, let's try. Okay, so tell me when you can see the screen. And then the other my other computer. So I'm 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 playing with two different computers. So, uh huh, it's long. Because we're seeing your screen, but we don't see anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, maybe, maybe it will not work because of there that. There it yeah. is. We got it now. Okay. Uh, so this is the, uh, I am in uh, in Demetra. I'm using Demetra. I do have the the uh, the UX uh, just on my desk beside me, and. Um, well, if I take, uh, well, for instance, I do have a calibration. Maybe I'll take a flat because I'm sure that's uh, easier. Uh, so I'm, I'm using, so this is an uh, Attic Horizon camera, uh, the, the, which is a CMOS camera. And uh, this is a quite, this is a big sensor. So I, I just do a binning two by two uh, just to save time. And this is a two seconds uh, uh, exposure. And if I click on a preview, so I hope I didn't break that. Okay, so this is just to show you that it works. That I do have a flat. Well, I didn't take the time to align the camera properly. And so the, the advantage of using that is now if I just ask for a calibration, uh, I, I just run the calibration and the, 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 it will be done. And I, the, 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 the transition is, is made automatically. And sorry, so I, I do have my calibration frame. So this is the, the, the advantage of having that. And now I can click on this um, uh, on this uh, panel here, and it opens 
the same windows, the same window as the um, as the uh, uses controller. In fact, behind this is really the same. Uh, oh, I see that you are late. Uh, um, uh, you you still don't have. Okay, so you can see the window now, and here I can change the the grating. And for instance, uh, here I am at the wavelengths. Uh, this one, uh, if I give zero grating angle here, so we can hear the motor. And by 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 the way, you, you see that the, the grating value is now the grating angle is zero, and of course the wavelength is also zero because both uh, both values things. And now, now well, here is. I'm taking risks. I don't know what will happen, but normally, yes, here it is. So this is the zeroth order. So and so, uh, well, I, I see the what you are seeing the other image. It will arrive in few seconds. Yes, here it is. Okay. So uh, when I was saying earlier that this is quite easy to tune and, and to calibrate. So the zeroth order is this one. So. It really, the, the idea is that you rotate uh, well manually or through the uh, in, in a remote. You just rotate the grating until you you can see that, uh, and then you know that this is the zero order. For instance, with the flat with the flat mount, you will have the same uh, same pattern, uh, and then you just calibrate to zero. And from this position, you can you can go uh, up to, uh, uh, for instance, I can switch to a flat and uh, ask for. Uh, going to, uh, I don't know, if we go to 900. Okay, so I am at 900. So it, uh, 900 means uh, 16 uh, degrees. Okay, and now if I take, if I switch to flat here and I take an image, I should be at the end of the, uh, of the flat. Yes, which is the case. Okay, so the, I see the, the end of the the, 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 the case here, the, the, the end of the, the flat area. You know, so this is the this is really the 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 well, the, the idea the, the general usage. And by the way, for me, well, this is what I, I did want to show you. And maybe you have uh, other questions. And um, when I when I used it. Well, you, you know, I, I am not a, a, a very high level uh, observer because I don't find the time to observe like I would like, but I, I did use uh, this uh, system for, for all the tests and for some observations uh, with my own observatory. And one thing that I discovered is that really, uh, be, before using the UVX in this condition, uh, I was sure that uh, when you have a configuration that works, you don't change anything and you keep it for all the night. And and with the motors now, I can really say that during the night, you can do uh, have a, a, a high resolution spectrum of H alpha and then go to H beta. And this is something really feasible because th this is easy to, to uh, uh, to control to adapt. Of course, if you change the, wave, the wavelengths, you have to redo the flats and, and the flat uh, frames and, and the calibration frames. Uh, but if you do that, you can really do uh, several observations. This is fast, this is uh, reliable, and this opens uh, really a uh, new horizon. Do you have any other questions? One, two, three. That's it. I think it. I think it looks great, Francois. And I'm going to send mine in as soon as my weather turns bad. I have good weather right now, but as soon as winter comes, you'll you'll get it on your doorstep. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, perfect. Yes, the, there is also this uh, the criteria of the weather. So if you, it's better to do that during the bad weather season, of course. Thank you to all of you, and uh, and, and thank you for all the, the uh, energy that you, you give us. Have a good day. Have a good night for some of you. And uh, and talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Francois. Bye-bye.